everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm John and this is Dennis and today we are going to be reviewing a Netflix horror film called The Privilege. It's directed by Felix Fuchsteiner and Katharina Schoen. Hopefully I got those names right, I'm sorry if I didn't. But before we dive into that, if you are a fan of film reviews, 4K Blu-ray reviews, TV reviews, video game reviews, and some tech reviews, we do them all here on this channel and nothing helps out more than by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. So Dennis called me up this week. We we're trying to do another. We we're trying to do a horror movie review that might not be known. So Dennis gave me a list, and this is the one that stuck out to me. And I really have to apologize to Dennis <laughs> because I didn't know what we were getting into with the privilege. It looked good, and the premise was good, but the movie itself, not very good. Actually, I would say atrocious. Dennis, what did you think of the privilege? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I sent John a list of had to be 15 movies, and the criteria was just. Released in the last two years, and horror. And I said, pick one, we'll have a good backlog. Just, you know, for you guys, we don't want to only do the blockbuster hits, the big releases. Mm -hmm. We want to do some stuff that's a little deeper of a dive that might be great. And damn you for picking this one. I know, I know. Because last week we picked uh, House on the Bayou, and, you know, we wanted to praise a little known horror movie that didn't get much notice. And this was another one that didn't get much notice. But little did we know, the reason why it didn't get much notice is because it's a bad movie. <laughs> Just all around. I mean, first of all, we've watched foreign films. Dubbing is fine if it's done right. Subtitles are fine. But the dub on this we talked about, it is so bad. Yeah. Better off watching with the subtitles because the dub feels like Netflix went around like people like a bunch of interns and said, "Hey, listen, can you do a dub for us? Like we just we got nothing and the movie's bad. Just come in. Just do I have to act? No, no, no you don't gotta act. Just you know, just speak. Like talk how you're talking right now. Yeah, just read the lines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was pretty rough. And I mean, some of the stuff the kids in this movie were speaking like it was 2008. <sighs> yeah, they were throwing around YOLOs and stuff and just yeah. all this this verbiage that it was like, this was released in 2022, and it, I genuinely, it would not be misplaced if it was released in 2008. Yeah, so this is gonna be a spoiler review, so basically, the basic premise of this movie is it starts out in the very beginning, which actually has a good opening scene. I guess that's something positive to say. Why don't you do the premise of this? So, I mean... It's hard to really break down what the plot of this movie is. Yeah, I feel like the writing team had an idea, and it was basically like, how can we make a horror movie just about privilege in the world, and how, basically, how evil people stay rich, and, you know, let's make a movie. But they had 18 different ideas, threw them all into a screenplay, and said, one of them's gonna be good and people are gonna like it. Mm -hmm. So in this, we have a fungus that only grows on dead bodies, a demon who needs human vessel to stay alive, and the demon, when you are consumed by it, will ensure that you're given all the privilege in the world and make the money and whatever you want. Yeah, the basic premise is saying that the rich people and their families all stay in power because they choose different vessels to just keep them going and they're all just demons. Yep. Which is a really cool premise. It's an exciting premise that, like, you know, that would explain how our separation and everything with, you know, capitalism, especially here in America, but this is a German film, and so it's a worldwide issue where why do the rich stay rich and the poor stay poor? That's the basic premise. It's saying that demons are doing it. But the way they explain this in this movie and trying to get that message across to you might be the most over-convoluted plot I have ever seen in a movie. <laughs> I agree 100%. The plot makes sense in the fact that the rich stay rich because all they do is basically like sacrifice younger people so demons can take them and then the family like the bloodline essentially mm -hmm. stays rich because this demon keeps taking these different forms i read an article about it after we watched it and they described it perfectly it is a bootleg get out that makes sense that makes a lot more sense and i get that because that's what get out get out really kind of set us on this path of finding the deeper meaning in horror yeah. like it was always there but like really now like that is the real selling point of the movies. Yeah. And now everyone wants to make their own version of Get Out. Like, um, I saw a movie called Sorry to Bother You, and that was the same thing, but I thought it was a better movie, but it was the same thing. It was hammering that message home with like a deeper meaning, and you just go too far, and the movie just gets, it just becomes sloppy. Yeah, and this one absolutely does, because it's not as simple. You know, Get Out, the reason it was so good, it was a deep thought, but executed simply and to perfection, where mm. These people were hypnotizing and, you know, doing like the brain transplant, the consciousness transplants, mm -hmm. and easy to understand. This film, in order for the demon to take you, you had to eat this fungus, so the one dad was owner of a pharmaceutical company, which was another thing I forgot to mention. It's kind of a knock at Big Pharma as well, yeah. so throw that into the ring of meanings that 
just muddy the waters, and he's basically has a dead body farm that he's growing this fungus on the dead bodies so he can put them in pills because when people eat this fungus, it doesn't kill them, but it makes it easier for the demon to take control of them. That's kind of what I was getting out of it. Like, it allows the demon, like, you, you're seeing what the demon is eventually going to do to you. It allows you to see the demon itself before it actually gets into you. But it's so weird, and like I, and I actually there was some parts like I liked, like the fact like oh they're all adopted, and that makes sense why the demon would choose them because it isn't blood. Every kid, none of these people are actually regular people. They're all adopted people. They're just given this gift of the demon. I yeah. guess it's a gift, but it's gonna ruin their entire lives. But I, I, I don't know. I never. I, the whole pharmaceutical thing, yeah, that makes sense. But again, the way they execute it with the fungus, it's like. I didn't need to see that. It didn't even. You could have took that whole out, that whole plot line out of there, and this movie would have worked the same. Yep. And it probably would have been a little better. Yeah, I agree. I think again, it's just one of those things that muddied the waters. If you take out everything, you want to make a knock at like big pharma culture and stuff like that. Just make all these kids, you know, like depressed and have every parent, you know, they all go to the same therapist who keeps giving them the same, you know, prescription. It doesn't have to be a fungus that grows on dead bodies. It can just be a regular prescription that, like, just kind of makes them brain dead so to speak you mm -hmm. know this in, instead of you know having emotion and stuff it makes them emotionless this way they can't defend themselves when the demon comes to no them. that would make it significantly clearer and i'd understand it more but then there were parts about the fungus growing and the people do you remember the characters cutting it out of their mouth yeah well but that only happened like twice and it doesn't explain it like so what but then why is he taking a pill every single day yeah. Like, why is it if he's able to reach in the back of his mouth and grab it and that all of a sudden cures them? I, I don't understand, and I don't understand the thought process. And if you think the dialogue is going to help progress this story, the dialogue will make you want to kill yourself. <laughs> and I am so sorry that I said that, because it really made me just rethink my entire life and what I'm doing. Because, like I said, it's probably a lot better with the subtitles, but that still can't clean this up. Like, either way or you go on this, it's still pretty bad, but the dub makes it even worse. Yeah, I mean, some of the scenes, they're like really tense scenes where someone just died or like one kid jumps off the roof of the school. Mm -hmm. And then like the conversation between the friends who just watched it is like, I'm very sad, mm -hmm. I am too. Oh, that stinks. Yeah. Okay, bye. And it's like, what? And then the best part, how about the random high school threesome that they threw into Oh my god, I forgot about that. That was my first, that was one of my notes. It was like, threesome out of nowhere. Like, they literally just shoehorn this scene in. Like, it, it really does feel like the directors were like, oh, you know, we wanted to always film a sex scene. <laughs> it doesn't really fit in this story, though. No. It doesn't matter if it fits. We're putting the sex scene in, and it's going to be a threesome, and it's happening right now. We're <laughs> filming it today. But we didn't even set this up, like, that this would even happen. It doesn't matter. That's what we're doing today. That's I think that's exactly how it happened. Because there's the main guy, a girl that's his best friend, and a girl that he's got a crush on. They, they interact. Him and the girl that's his best friend interact the whole time. The girl he's got a crush on, they interact for maybe 30 seconds the whole film. And then all of a sudden, she's in his house meeting his parents. And then they're convinced there's a demon coming to get him. So they go and they sleep in this abandoned warehouse, all three of them. And while they're laying there, the one girl who he's got a crush on, who's been around the least of anybody, is like, we might die tomorrow. Why not die happy? Or whatever the hell she says. And then she kisses the guy, rolls over and kisses the girl, boom, threesome. And then there's still like 45 minutes left of the movie, so they wake up and just go to school the next day. I know! They don't even die or fight the demon. They just had a threesome for the sake of a threesome and then went to school. Yeah, like you could have cut that entire scene out. No point. No adding to the story, nothing at all. Bad decision that really, in a movie of bad decisions, might be the leader of bad decisions. Yeah, I mean, I would have to agree. Overall, I uh, don't really recommend this unless mm -hmm. you want to have a good laugh and you have like an hour and 40 minutes of your life to waste, but you should honestly go watch anything. I mean, watching paint dry, maybe watching a couple of the first episodes of SpongeBob. I mean, anything is better than this because, by God, this film, it almost shattered our friendship. Netflix really cares about their movies they put on their streaming service, huh? They want to talk about all their problems that they're having financially like and everything like that. Don't spend money on movies like this. <laughs> I don't know what you spent on it, but even if you spent $45, it, that was $45 that could have been given to me. You know, like, <laughs> That's three Netflix subscriptions right there. Three yeah. months. 
No, it wasn't worth it. It didn't, it, it wasn't. I'm giving this a 2 out of 10. It's still better than Nightmare on Elm Street Remake. But that's what I'm giving it. Uh, wow. No, I'm lying. Okay, I, it's not. It's not as bad as that. It's. I'll give it. A, I'll give it a two out of ten. It's a bad movie, but at least it didn't look that bad. I guess is my only positive. There were some cool shots in there. Yeah, I don't disagree. I. I think I'll go two out of ten. And really, honestly, for me, the only reason I'm giving it a two out of ten is, it is hard to make a movie. It is. We're working on screenplays. It's very hard to write them. It's very hard to get them accepted by a company to produce and direct and. So it is a very hard process. Acting is difficult. Directing is difficult. Mm -hmm. So I can never. I don't. I don't think I can ever give a movie a zero out of ten. No. Just because of how hard it is to get your work to the point of production and distribution. Yeah, I don't like to come on here and make fun of a movie. Like it's fun because for the viewer it's fun because like you know that's what kind of gets more views on YouTube is if you rip a movie apart. Yeah. But unfortunately, like Big Dennis said, we are trying to actually get movies made, and we can tell you it's extremely hard. Yeah. So, like, th these people got a movie made, and if we made a movie and it came out like this, I wouldn't want people going on YouTube and insulting me. You know, I'd feel hurt too. So, it kind of yeah. does suck to do it, but on the other hand, I probably would have thicker skin about it, and so would you. Yeah. So, it's just, you know, it's kind of part of the game, it's what we're here to do, and, yeah. you know. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like you should know what's good and what's bad. Yeah, you should, because it's, it's your time. We wasted our time. I feel like I truly wasted my time on this. So Yeah, so you know. I think 2 out of 10, do not recommend. Mm -mm. Um, again, credit to everyone who got it produced. I don't know how they did it. I would love notes on how you got such a convoluted screenplay through, through and got someone on board to fund a movie. Um, but yeah, not a recommendation for us at all. Nope. But, you know, it is a recommendation, this channel. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to it, and then tell all your friends. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video where today, it's Monday, that means we're gonna be spinning our magic wheel and we're gonna be giving away two digital codes this week, just like we've done for the last couple weeks. And again, we're gonna be doing that again this Friday. So if you are entered in this week's digital code giveaway and you don't win, come back to this Friday's video where we're where again, we're gonna be giving away two digital codes. You have the option of any of the codes. We'll be adding some new codes to it for whatever codes get picked this week. We'll be replacing them with some brand new digital codes. And this week, Matt asked you guys, were you a Sega fan or a Nintendo kid growing up? And which Sega game did you prefer most, Sonic 1 or Sonic 2? And we got a lot of great answers this week. I didn't realize how many people actually grew up as Sega kids. I was telling people that I had a Sega at my dad's house, I had a Genesis. And then at my mom's house, I had a Super Nintendo until eventually I got a Sony PlayStation. And that kind of just ruined my entire childhood because after that point, PlayStation was number one all the way until 2005 or 2006 when the Xbox 360 came out. And then I became an Xbox kid pretty much from then on. And now, unfortunately, I don't get to play as many video games as I did when I was a kid. But I still am a huge fan. I get to play every once in a while. You know, that's kind of my go-to relaxation time. I'll play Madden or something. But not like when I was a kid where, you know, video games ruled the world and everything else was secondhand. And I was surprised to see how many people were huge Nintendo fans, huge Genesis fans. People, I think a lot of us were in agreement that Sonic 2 was the best. And then a lot of people actually said that they really enjoyed uh, Sonic and Knuckles, which was the third one in the trilogy. And I really do think that after that, I mean, the Sonic games kind of did fall off. There's some good ones in there, but we really haven't had a good Sonic game in, I would say, probably decades. Which is a shame because, you know, that's one of the most famous names in video games is Sonic. And obviously, it's still pretty popular because we've had two great Sonic movies come out starring Jim Carrey, so... The name still holds value, and there's still hope that down the line we'll get a good Sonic game. At least I hope so. But enough of me rambling on about video games and whatnot. Let's spin this magic wheel and find out who this week's digital code giveaway winners are going to be. Wheel spin number one, coming up. Who's it gonna be? Mo! I think that's Mo's first win. He enters every single week. Congratulations, Mo. You deserve it, buddy. And Jeremy D. That's another person who usually enters every single week. Congratulations, Jeremy. All right. Congratulations, Mo and Jeremy. Both Mo and Jeremy have actually entered the giveaway for 
for quite some time now they've been coming back week to week so it's really nice to see people who come back week to week and enter the giveaway actually get some wins and get their choice of the digital codes because you know that's what we like to see we try to you know it's completely random but we've had some people win more than once already and then we've had people who haven't won at all so it's really cool that somebody who has been coming back week after week and entering finally gets some wins that was like james when he won the godfather 4k trilogy set you know he came he was pretty much in it from the beginning and he never got a win in the digital code giveaway but hey he saved it up in big time and it paid off in spades because he did end up winning the godfather 4k trilogy set so keep coming back eventually it'll be your time you'll get a win just keep entering. Every week we do this digital code giveaway. All you gotta do is come to Friday's video, answer one of the two digital code giveaway questions, and you're automatically entered, and you come back to this video on every Monday's video and find out if you are the lucky winner. So Mo and Jeremy, you know how this works. You either go to our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter and direct message us and let us know which digital code you would want. Or you could always go to our email at letstalkentmt at gmail.com. And just same thing, just let us know which digital code that you want. And if it's still available, I will send it right over or Matt will send it right over. If it's not available, we'll let you know and pick something else. I could also always send you a list or pictures of digital codes that we have available so you have your choice of them if you weren't, if you weren't able to get a good look at them that we have flashing on the video before you. And we're going to keep doing this because this is really one of our favorite things to do on this channel is every week we just love to talk to you guys about movies and this week we were just talking video games. It really does feel like going on a nostalgia trip and just looking back on memories or talking about some of our favorite things that we, we don't get to talk about in the world that much with the people that we work with or anything like that. It just feels nice to finally talk to people with similar interests and I can tell you that we really do enjoy doing that every single week with you guys. So if you weren't lucky enough to win this week. We'll see you on Friday where we'll be talking some more movies. I'm not too sure what this Friday's video is going to be yet. We're still kind of working out the schedule. We have Red Dawn coming this week as far as a 4K Blu-ray review. And I'm working on the Child's Play 4K Trilogy set review. So bear with us. And tomorrow, Tuesday, I think we're going to be doing a brand new Sonos re-review. I think that's finally available. So if you know Matt's sound system, he has a Sonos. We're going to be re-reviewing it. It was actually, I believe, our second video when Matt first got it. So we're going all the way back to the beginning, and we're going to look back and see if Matt still enjoys his Sonos system as much as when he first bought it. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. It really means the world to us, and it really means the world to us if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, because nothing helps out building this community more than by doing that.